Hello everybody and welcome to Unimeet Gothenburg's Welcome Evening. My name is Abhilash and I'm going to be your host this evening for the next coming hour and I'm hoping that we're going to have a lot of fun with each other. First, we're going to have to start by defining what Unimeet is, of course, before we go into any of the details that we're going to have this evening. So what is Unimeet? Unimeet is a platform that is a collaboration between Chalmers University of Technology, University of Gothenburg, and the Trade and Industry Group at the Gothenburg & Company, which is part of the city of Gothenburg. It's a platform for people like you, international students and researchers, to connect with each other, network with each other, interact with each other, and make a lot of memories through all the events and activities, which are all free and organized by Unimeet Gothenburg. So let's make sure that we take advantage of all the opportunities that Unimeet gives you. With that said, what do we have lined up for you? Let's take a look. We have first a guided tour of the Museum of Gothenburg. It is an exhibit of 400 years of the history of Gothenburg. So last year in 2021, we actually, the city of Gothenburg, celebrated its anniversary, 400 year anniversary, and the Museum of Gothenburg has an exhibit and they have taken time to produce a video just for you that goes through this exhibit and introduces you to the 400 year history of the city. And then we have a quiz where we will have some nice prizes. It's a 10 minute quiz with 10 questions and maybe some of you will win something. And then there is a presentation on what things you can see and do in the city of Gothenburg, coming back to the experiences we were talking about, the making of the memories that we want you to have. And then, of course, we are going to end the afternoon or the evening, this hour, with the upcoming activities that Unimeet Gothenburg has organized for you. Now, please take the opportunity to click on the Q&A button that's under your, on, on the bottom of your screen so you can ask all the questions you want. And you will also note that this session is actually being recorded, so you will actually have access to it at a later point in time. But before we go on to any of the things that we have lined up for you, it's time for us to say hello to somebody very important. Hello, Maria. Hello. Please. I love that you call me important. Of course you are. <laughs> well, uh, I'm the uh, marketing coordinator of Unimeet Gothenburg, and my name is Maria Sulve. Uh, and uh, I actually have a question oh, yeah. before we start for everyone. Even before the quiz, there yes. is another quiz. Let's go. Because I want to know where everybody uh, are right now in the world, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. where they are joining us from, in which country. Right. Yeah. And so for to in order to answer this question, you'll have to log into your phone, right? So you use your phone or your computer, you log into menti.com and use use the code 17221694. So you're going to put this code in on menti.com 17221694 and then you will be able to answer this question. Which country are you joining us from or perhaps even if you're already in the city of Gothenburg, yes. then where are you actually from? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because we usually get a, a lot of variety and different countries. And I always think it's so fun to, to know where everyone is right. from. And we can start seeing now countries already popping up. Usually we've got a few countries and it depends on the time of the year. Right? Yeah. We have two welcome yes. evenings, one in January, one in September. That's correct. Yeah. And those countries always change. Like it depends on which time of the year it is. Oh, we've got awesome. So the, the point with Menti is that the, the size of the country names yeah. change depending on the number of people from Ex that country, right? Yeah, so we have a lot of people from Germany, from exam for example, Austria. and Austria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's somebody from Gothenburg. They called Gothenburg a country. Yeah, wow. <laughs> maybe they didn't realize it was a country. All of said. Oh, Ooh, wow, okay. Ooh. That's getting even more specific. Oh. It's, not, it's not Gothenburg anymore. Oh, and from Japan, konbanwa. Uh, Maria des. Uy, look at that. <laughs> Damn, we've got somebody that can speak some Japanese. Yes. Uh, have you studied Japanese? Yeah, I've been. Uh, I've studied Japanese in Tokyo for two years. Oh wow! Okay. So I was also uh, an, uh, a student abroad. Yeah, okay, so uh, exactly, and this is the story for me as well. Yeah. I've also lived. Um, I mean, I'm from India, mm -hmm. and I moved to Sweden in 2009. So I've kind of lived your life, but not ah, in Japan, in, in Sweden. Cool. Right, like it's yeah. the other way around. Uh, the other direction at least. La La Land, of course that's the country. And of course, so we've got the major countries here being Sweden, Austria and Germany. Clearly we've got a lot of people from around the world. 
it's not a lot of countries, but it is quite a few countries. Somebody from North Korea. That's going to be um, something that a person that I would actually like to personally uh, me meet and uh, get to know. Yeah. Anyway, so with all of these countries, and it's amazing to see that you are all joining us from all of these different places or are from these different places, let's actually do the next part here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to quickly show you this video, which is, as I told you, from the Museum of Gothenburg. It is about the exhibit that is in place right now, which is celebrating the 400 year anniversary of Gothenburg. Like you can see, 2021, 400, right? So we're gonna have this exhibit and this video has been taken, has been produced just for you. So go ahead, watch this video and hope that it inspires you to go check out the actual exhibit. See you on the other side. Welcome to Gothenburg and to the City Museum of Gothenburg. We are here to give you a brief introduction to the history of this city, more specifically to the birth of Gothenburg. And we intend to do so in an exhibition called The Birth of Gothenburg. And this is a story that begins about 400 years ago. We are now standing in the exhibition and here we have a map showing, of, showing what today is the Swedish West Coast. But 400 years ago, the boundaries went quite differently. The northern part here belonged to Norway, and the southern part here belonged to Denmark. And they were both ruled by the same king, the Danish king. And Sweden only had a small uh, minor corridor along the river Göta Elbe to reach the sea without asking the Danish king for permission. Since the late Viking age, there had been a small Swedish town here yeah. Earlier it was located a bit inland, but then moved closer to the coast. But this town was very hard to defend when the Danes attacked, and they did again and again, destroying the city. And sometimes the Swedes themselves destroyed the city just so the Danes couldn't. But finally, a Swedish king decided it was time for a new town, better defended, better located. It was time for Gothenburg. The king who made this decision was Gustavus Adolphus, one of Sweden's most famous war heroes. And that is because he dragged Sweden into the great European war called the Thirty Year War. He won a couple of battles, then got lost in the midst of the battlefield and was killed. To the Swedish self-image, he became the pure-hearted king who left his country to defend the Protestants against the evil Catholics. And just to make you understand how important he has been, in the 1950s, school children were asked, who would you like to be like? And the winner among boys was Gustavus Adolphus. To the city of Gothenburg, the connection with this king has been important at least since the, since the 1800s. In Gustavus Adolphus Square, you can find a large statue of the king pointing towards the ground saying, I found it. No, he's saying, this is where the city should be. There is a risk though that this is a bit of a one-way love since the king founded at least a dozen cities and he visited Gothenburg once. But in Gothenburg he was celebrated on the 6th of November. That is not his birthday but his day of death. School children were practicing marching weeks in advance and on that day they marched down to the square where some official person made a speech telling the children to be like Gustavus Adolphus. Be as brave, as pure-hearted, and as Swedish. Then the children had an afternoon off. It was a great day. Um, this continued at least until the 1960s. Today you'll find a couple of elderly men offering some flowers to the king on that day. And one thing more, a pastry. On the 6th of November in Gothenburg, you can buy a pastry with a small portrait in chocolate of the king. So the decision was made to build a new town in the West. But what would it look like? Well, the Swedes wanted to follow the latest fashion. And the latest in Europe at this time when it came to towns, something called the ideal city. It was invented in Italy and was the combination of a city shaped like a circle or a star with straight streets leading to the center and equally large blocks. The city was surrounded by stone walls and was connected to the world through the streets. 
But this idea then came to the Netherlands and they made their own version of the ideal city. They didn't have as much stone, but they had a lot of mud. So the Dutch ideal city was one with earthworks, uh, a moat and straight canals leading to the center. And the Swedish king said, I want one of those. So Gothenburg was planned uh, as a Dutch ideal city. And uh, the project even invited a couple of Dutch engineers to take responsibility for the moat part and the canals. Today there is very little left of this old city. Uh, there are parts of the moat surrounding the old uh, part of the town. Uh, you can see a small part of the uh, walls that once surrounded the city. And some of the canals is still here in the center of the city. But that's all. Gothenburg was a governmental project with an international touch. And this doubt with the rest of the world didn't stop there. The city got the city privileges written in two different languages, in Swedish and in German. That means Gothenburg got two names from the start. Göteborg in Swedish and in German Gothenburg, still used in English as Gothenburg. The government also wanted an international population, so they invited people craftsmen, merchants from the Protestant part of Europe, come and join us. Most of all, they hoped for well, wealthy trading houses from Amsterdam and Hamburg to establish. That didn't work out too well. But a lot of wind-driven souls showed up and they were welcome. If any Dutch tradesman with some status showed up, he was thrown into the city council. If you look at the names of the early city dwellers, you find German names, French names, Dutch names, British names. But the largest group was, of course, the people from the earlier city. Uh, and they were more or less forced to move. They had to leave their sites and rebuild their houses in the new town, and they were not pleased. They were not pleased with all the foreigners giving special treatments either. And finally, the king, the war hero, remember, he had to interfere, and he decided that there should be shared power in the town. There should be a city council including 12 men with four Swedes, three Germans, three Dutchmen and two from Scotland. There should be three mayors, one Swede, one German, one Dutch, uh, sorry Scotland. Uh, all important documents should be written in Swedish and Dutch and the foreigners even got a church of their own, still known as the German church. This situation remained for a couple of decades until the population had melted together and Gothenburg became more of a Swedish, Swedish town. So there it was, a brand new multilinguistic border town, ready for uh, defense and trading. And things also started to happen outside the city itself. Since the Middle Ages, Denmark had been the leading power in Scandinavia. But during the 1600s, the balance of power was shifting. Sweden became more and more a country organized for war. And for once, they uh, defeated Denmark again and again. And then Sweden started cutting pieces out of Denmark and Norway. From Norway, uh, we took Bohusland. And from Denmark, Halland. Uh, and the coastline became Swedish and Gothenburg was no longer a threatened city. Instead, it became the center for administrating the new Swedish West Coast uh, and for making the new nationals Swedish. How, you may ask? Well, the answer is priests. All over Scandinavia, uh, young peasant boys were sent to the university to be trained as priests. And then they were sent home to preach about uh, God and the King. Previously, boys from uh, Halland and Bohusland had been sent to Copenhagen, but now they were sent to Gothenburg instead. And then, after a couple of years, they were sent home to preach about uh, in Swedish and about Sweden and the Swedish King. Since the beginning, Gothenburg was a town and a fortress. The early fortifications were quite humble earthworks, but as Sweden became a more and more important player in Northern Europe, it was more important to make a good impression. So in the 1670s, a huge building project started. 
Gothenburg was supposed to get a proper and impressive defense. So for nearly 30 years, Gothenburg was a building site where soldiers, prisoners of war, and of course craftsmen were digging and building, giving Gothenburg huge walls. They were occupying about one fifth of the city's area. The city also got two stone towers, one on each side, and a small fortress on an island out in the fjord. Today, there's only one piece left of the wall, but it's rather impressive. You can still visit the two stone towers and the fortress on the island. And if you put your hand on one of these rugged walls, you close your eyes, and maybe you could get an impression of what this city once may have looked like. So, this was the short version of the birth of Gothenburg, a story quite like the story of hundreds of other cities around the world, and quite unique. I hope you have enjoyed the journey and that you will enjoy your stay here in Gothenburg. Take the opportunity to learn all you can about this city, Sweden's gate to the west. And welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed that video and it kind of got you curious about the city. 400 years of history should have something to teach us all about what, what can happen as, as, as a city and how it grows and how it develops and so on and so forth. What things have changed. Once I got the question about how has the architecture of the city changed after people started using stone in order to build as opposed to wood because wood was what was once used and there used to be a lot of fires. And this was a question that got me thinking quite a lot about how cities are built and so on and so forth. So perhaps you will have your own moment of wonder. With that, let's check the next step, the next uh, item on our, on our agenda. What we have for you is a quiz. I hope you are people like me, super excited about quizzes. And if you are, you can use your phone to scan the QR code or you can go to menti.com and this time we have a new code. So you gotta go refresh that page or open a new tab with menti.com and use the code 16137795. So once again the code is 16137795. And once you join that using that code you'll be getting this opportunity to set up a nickname and when you're done with that, we will be able to start the quiz. Meanwhile, this quiz is going to be, as I said, you know, 10 questions, approximately 10 minutes. Each question is going to give you 20 seconds to answer. And the faster you answer, the more points you make. And so the person with the most number of points at the end of the 10 questions is going to be the winner. And there's going to be a first prize and a second prize. But what are the prizes then? I'll show you. So we have first prize over here, which is a Gothenburg tray. You have a kitchen towel, a diary, a 400 year anniversary postcard from the city of Gothenburg, and a coffee mug that also commemorates the 400 year anniversary of the city. This is the first prize. And for the second place, we have a cup, a coffee cup that, is a, that says Fika. And fika is a Swedish word, which basically means being able to take the time to drink a cup of coffee with 
maybe a pastry and it's usually done along with friends or family or with a romantic partner or you can do it on a date or you can do it with your colleagues it doesn't matter who you do it with actually it's the coffee that's important but yeah so you can do the coffee and for that you can actually go to any cafe any cafe in Gothenburg will actually give you a fika you can ask for one and you will find what they offer as part of that fika so going back to our our menti we're going to go into menti.com use the code 16137795 it's the code that you see on the screen or you scan the qr code now we're going to start i'm hoping all of you have um, have um, gotten your uh, profiles and everything ready here we go we have we're seeing oh my god yes robots and cats and bears kings people that are thinking volcanoes nice so we're going to start the countdown very soon and we're going to start the quiz. Three, two, one, let's go. So all correct answers give you maximum points and the faster you do this, the faster you get it. The first question, what year was Gothenburg founded? Choices are on your screen right now. One, 1450, two, 1621, three, 1715. In five seconds, the question comes to an end one, we're done. What's the first, what's the correct answer? 1621. So if you paid attention to the previous video, then you would have known that it's, it was 1621 that, that uh, the city was founded. Now, a little bit of trivia for you. This city was also, is also called Little London. And that's because during the 1800s, a lot of English and Scotsmen settled down here. And they did a lot of, uh, they did a lot of uh, businesses. Uh, they built a lot of things. They even started universities. Uh, donated to a library, started a hospital, so on and so forth. So it started getting this London vibe to it and hence was called Little London. Question number two, let's go. And the question is, Gothenburg is sometimes compared to another city another European city, putting little in front of that city. Oops, that was a, a giveaway, a dead, dead giveaway. Um, well, here is a free point for you. So everybody that's been paying attention to whatever I was rambling about in the previous question, you got your chance. Let's see. Oh my God, you people still make mistakes? Come on. You can't be that fast with your fingers, right? You could have been slower, thought about the question really quickly. Mm, never mind. Anyway, so question number three. I'm not going to make any mistakes this time around, am I? So we've got question number three. Before that, we are going to look at the leaderboard, of course. And we have Ju as the person that's the fastest, of course. Volcano, really. All the very best to the first three people. The mouse. Is that a mouse? That should be a mouse. And a lion. All the best. RCTR, Ali, and Jew. Let's go. Next question. Question number three out of 10. And the question is What's the name of the most prestigious award at, Go at the Gothenburg Film Festival? One, the Dragon Award Best Nordic Film. Two, Bird Award Best Nordic Film. Three, Golden Award Best Nordic Film. What's it going to be? And the correct answer is Dragon Award Best Nordic Film. Congratulations to everybody that got it right. A little bit of trivia about this would be that actually this film festival starts on Friday this week. So if you want to check it out, just go to the, just search for, Google, uh, for Gothenburg Film Festival and you will find more information about this particular film festival. Next question, question number four. So once again, the faster you are, the more points you get. Which member of ABBA was born in Gothenburg in 1945? The choices are on your phone. Agneta Feldskog, Benny Anderson, Björn Ulveus. Which of these three people were born in Gothenburg in 1945 and were part of the group ABBA? Time's up. The correct answer is... Björn and Veus. 15 of you got that right. Let's see how the leaderboard looks this time. Ooh, ooh, okay. There are some people that have made a lot of points this time. 
and it changes and we've got a rabbit of course the rabbit it has to be the fastest uh well done very very well done rena timmy and jules very well done upsetting the leaderboard let's see how this goes for you guys moving on to question number five five out of ten here is how it looks remember you're winning a coffee set basically the salt water outside gothenburg archipelago has long attracted fishermen and sailors what's the name of the sea is it skagerak is it Kattegat? Is it Nordkorn? And the correct answer is Kattegat. So if you've ever watched the TV show Vikings, you would know this. It was there. With that said, we're going to question number six. Another reason why you should go check out quest, uh, the show Vikings. Not that I like it very much, but still, you know, it's a nice-ish show. Not exactly historically right, though. Anyway, what's the name of the actress from Gothenburg who won an Oscar in 2015? Hint, the movie is The Danish Girl. And we're not talking about the guy, obviously. So, Miriam Brint, Marlin Okeman, or Alicia Vikander. Which of these three people won the Oscar? And they were born in, in uh, Gothenburg. The correct answer is, of course, Alicia Vikander. And 17 of you got that right. This brings us to the next leaderboard. Let's see how Rena is doing now. Okay, it's taking a moment to load its results. Clearly there is a lot of calculation to be done now. Let's see what happens. Hmm, come on internet, you can do this. Come on Menti, you can do this. See, it's moments like this that you actually start wondering what technology does for you, right? You kind of, I'm not sure why it doesn't work, then I'm going to have to refresh the page. Maybe the quiz ends. Maybe it's too early. Maybe it's too late. Maybe the computer's tired. We never know. But we've got, obviously, our, our colleagues here working very hard to figure out what's going on. And we're back! Ooh, uh, looks like we've got some people that might upset the table this time. Ooh, Arena drops to place three. Timmy goes to place one. And NLJ makes a comeback. All right! We've got something going on here. The competition is heating up. We are going to question number seven. Seven of 10, here we go. What does the question say? The question is as follows. How many restaurants in Gothenburg has at least one star in the, in the guide Michelin? So how many Michelin uh, star restaurants do we have? At least one star. There are three restaurants. There are five restaurants, there are eight restaurants. Which one of these three would you pick as the answer to the question? How many restaurants in Gothenburg has at least one star, one Michelin star? Time's up. The answer is correct, number five, as in five restaurants. 14 of you got that right. Let's see how this works out now. Question number eight is up. And the question is, Jotaborius Varvet is an annual half marathon running competition in Gothenburg. How long is the distance to run? Is it 21,097.5 meters? It is, is it 20,987.5 meters or 19,967.7 meters? Mm. It is 21,097.5 meters. 16 of you got that right. Let's check the leaderboard now. Ooh. It's going to get exciting. Let's see how this works out now. Zlatan is beating everybody like crazy with the points. And is the fastest and is on top. It's an upset, everybody. Oh, my God. Somebody from the very end of the table, more or less, makes it to the top of the table. This is what is called rags to riches. Next, we are looking at question number nine. Nine out of ten. Only two questions to go. And we're going to see whether Zlatan manages to stay on top. And the question is, whew, what was Gothenburg appointed by UNESCO in 2021 as the first city in Sweden? What was the appointment made by UNESCO for Gothenburg in 2021? Is it the city of literature? Is it the city of sustainability or is it the city of... One of these three things did Gothenburg get appointed as by UNESCO in 2021? The correct answer is, of course, it is the city of literature. Is that right? It seems to be right. 
is the city of literature. Um, I've got a feeling that we might have made a mistake here. I'm not 100% sure. It is the city of literature, says my colleagues. So, yes, that is. Maybe the city of sustainability was an award that was given, to, given, us, given to us a little while earlier than that. I'm not sure about this. Yes, so city of literature in 2021. That's the first city in Sweden to actually get this award. So, I was wrong. You're right, the four of you. Congratulations. Leaderboard time. The last time we're going to check the leaderboard before we go on to the last question. And it seems like it's going to be possibly an upset once again. No, it's not. Zlatan manages to stay on top. Ali makes a comeback and Timmy stays at number three. Timmy, here's your opportunity to break into top two and get the second prize. We are going to our final question. Question number 10. And the question is... Hold on to your seats and hats. What's the name of the park that has a wide range of activities? One of the most famous ones, Way Out West Festival. Which park hosts this activity? And what is the name of this park? Is it Kungsparken? Is it Slotskogen? Or is it Keeler's Park? Which one of these three parks hosts a lot of wide variety of activities? And the correct answer is, of course, Slotskogen. 16 of you got that right. I wonder which one of you was the fastest, though. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. And the first prize goes to... Ali! Oh my god! Well done, Ali. That was a good upset. Very well done. All the very best. All you've got to do is actually contact us with your name and your, um, what else do we have to have here? We have to include your name, that's it, and your address. You're going to send it to unimeet at gotteborg.com. And this email address will be at the very end of this presentation. There will be a slide where we show you email addresses. So stay and you will see the email address, unimeet at gotteborg.com. And of course, this is also for you, Zlatan. So you also have to get in touch with us. The second prize is for you. So make sure that both of you write an email into us. And everybody else, you can also send us emails. That's You don't have to feel that you can't send us emails. But these two people are writing to us because, you know, we have to give them their, their prizes. With that said, we are going on to the next part of today's section. And this is about what you can see and do. What are the things that you can see and do in the city of Gothenburg? We'll start off with a video, three people, three continents, three activities. So this is a video that's going to be about three people that came to Gothenburg as students and researchers, stayed and found activities that made them uh, make friends and make uh, memories together. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's uh, throw on this video and I hope it inspires you to go find out some activities yourselves. We have this event to yeah. try all these different dishes. We had like, I had the chance to try like people from France, mm -hmm. India, Turkey, Bangladesh, all these different, like from Spain, German, yeah. like it was really interesting yeah. to try all these different tastes. And yeah. this is yeah. also so yeah. important to have, honestly, because I feel like, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, during the pandemic, we are staying yeah. at home so much. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. way too like, much. And but it gets kind of depressing as well. Yeah. Actually, before I, ar I arrived here, I was so nervous because mm -hmm. I didn't, I don't know anyone here yeah. and I don't know place and a different country. Mm -hmm. Just because we started doing these things, yeah, it helped helpful. me so much. It's, it's so some important to be have in some this. friends, yeah, especially yeah. do something together, you need to not socialize. just meet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Omar, do you remember that time? Uh, where is that place? We went bowling. Yeah, or, uh, it was or, or something you, to do. Yeah, you were bad. <laughs> <laughs> really bad. Yeah, really bad. <laughs> really bad. Yeah. Was good. I was, I was good, good, but it went down. I think friendship means being there for someone when that person needs support or help. It's so, so important, mainly when you come from a different culture, a country that is so different than this one. So I think that is uh, one of the most important things is to, to have friends and to meet people. Um, I met you at a barbecue event this yeah. summer, right? Yeah, for hiking. Oh yeah, that's yes. Right. Yes, I think that is pretty common to meet you in this kind of activities or yeah. to meet people. So yeah, we, we meet them. In you need Easter. treasure yes. hunt. Yes, yeah. yes, and this one. It was so nice. So, how long have you been here? 
I guess so this is the fourth week I've been in Gothenburg. Found that uh, the life here is uh, quite different from what I'm doing in my hometown. I'm actually, with you. today is like two weeks since oh. I came here, yeah, and uh, it's quite fun already. There is lots of sport you can do in Gothenburg. Swedish people are very sporty, so it's yeah. very famous and popular for, for and the I people. I suppose it's a good way to meet new people and to make friends during just spending your time yeah. in the same fields. Yeah. I think we all have this common thing between us, like we all are in a new country and yeah. we all have this same thing that mm. we want to meet new people, we want to yeah. gather, we want to do some activity, yeah. we want to do that's discover. how you learn. Yeah. We want to discover. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I think brought yeah. us together. Yeah. And yeah. then we had like activity after another, and we start like doing more, and then mm -hmm. we bond actually more yeah. and more. Yeah, yeah. Like every time yeah. I spend more time with you, I feel like oh, I have like a my family. It's it's nice to have a family okay. in a new country. Yeah, yeah. 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 true. That. Say, yeah. 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 So I'm back and I love that movie, I think it's uh, such a cool vibe in it. And now I will continue this segment by quickly giving you some suggestions and ideas about what to see and do while you are here in Gothenburg. Um, it will mostly focus on the nature activities and luckily we do have a lot of nature in Gothenburg, so that's perfect. And we will send you links and information afterwards. And as we said in the beginning, it's also recorded. So you can go back and watch this again if you would like. Um, so let's start with our nature areas. We have a lot more than the ones listed here, but uh, these are very popular areas. And uh, we have a lot of forests, lakes, wildlife, um, but some of them uh, are nature reserves, which means that there can be some rules and regulations like you can't pick berries or mushrooms or you can't put up a tent and uh, things like that. So I want you to keep that in mind <laughs> while you are out uh, in the in forest and in the nature. Um, and uh, most of, uh, a lot of these nature areas are actually not that far from the city center. You can uh, take a tram ride and very easily reach them. So I think this is a very good point about Gothenburg. And the walking trails. We also have a lot of walking trails and some of them go far up north or further south. And uh, you can choose to do just a part of the walking trails or the entire trail if you are sporty or fit. <laughs> Uh, and uh, a tip is to bring coffee and some snacks and friends, like sit down next to a lake uh, and just enjoy the forest and the nature. Uh, and if you are not that into hiking, we do also have very nice parks and gardens. Uh, like I said in the quiz, you have Slottskogen with the Way Out West, for example, but this is also a great park for uh, recreational purposes. You can go bike riding, uh, sit down and have a picnic or uh, yeah, just hang out with your friends and uh, um, Botaniska Trägården is our botanical garden and it's really beautiful. Lots of flowers and uh, uh, things like that like all year round. So I really recommend to visit our parks and gardens. Yeah, and in this picture you see Skansen Kronan, which is one of our oldest buildings actually in Gothenburg. Uh, it's an old fortress from the 1600s and uh, it's placed up on a hill as you can see and you need to climb almost 200 steps to get there. But the view from up here is amazing. It's totally worth it. Uh, and it's not the only great viewing spot in Gothenburg and most of them also have a free admission because they are in the nature. And uh, I just want to point out that in Sweden, uh, stores, cafes and restaurants and stuff like that are open. Uh, and a popular area in Gothenburg is the Haga area. And it has smaller stores, very cozy cafes uh, and old wooden houses that you will not find actually in the city center. So I really recommend to go and check this place out because it almost feels like another uh, era in, in time. 
Yeah, and this is one of my favorite places in Gothenburg, Liseberg Amusement Park. Uh, it's uh, actually the biggest amusement park in the Nordic countries, and it has 41 rides and attractions. And you can also find restaurants, an arcade hall, beautiful greenery, and it's open a lot during the year, both for Halloween and summer and in the Christmas uh, season, it hosts a really famous Christmas market that I actually love. And it also have, has a, a live stage where you can see a lot of good bands. Uh, and I, I really recommend going here, whether you like amusement parks and roller coasters or not, because it's a great place to take a stroll. And also, Universum Science Center. And this is the National Science Center of Sweden, and it's a very cool place. Uh, it's, it's a science museum with several floors, and the most famous segment is the big rainforest. But it also has exhibitions about space, health, Swedish waters, and a huge aquarium. And it's open every day during the year, so you can visit this anytime. And uh, right now you pre-book on their website. Um, yeah, I always take my family that's not from, they're not from Gothenburg and I take them here every time they visit. It's a really cool place for all ages. Uh, and uh, you heard from the Museum of Gothenburg before, but we have actually a few museums in Gothenburg. We're very, we are very proud of uh, Gothenburg Museum of Art that actually has a Michelin star. And we also have Sweden's only handicraft museum and a museum about world culture and museums with contemporary art. Some of these have a free entrance or just cost 60 kronor and uh, almost all of them are free if you are under 20. So if anyone is under 20, good for you. Uh, yes, and Gothenburg is also quite an event city. I would just mention that we have big arenas like Scandinavium and Ullevi, where top artists from all over the world come to play and we arrange music festivals, uh, and also larger sport events. And this year, hopefully, for me at least, we will see artists such as Ed Sheeran, Kiss, Brian Adams, Rammstein, and Deep Purple. So I really hope that this will happen this year. Yeah, so that was uh, some suggestions about what you can see and do while you are in Gothenburg. Oh, not, let's not forget our beautiful archipelago, how could I? We have the northern and the southern parts and both of them are actually easy to reach with public transport. And uh, this is like one of the questions that we get asked a lot, like how do I get to the archipelago and when is a good time to go? And I would say like, whenever the weather is good during the entire year, you can go there. And you can cliff, go cliff bathing, hiking, find nature reserves, kayak rentals, and there's also accommodations on the islands. And uh, differs a little bit from island to island, um, nature-wise. So I would go to a few of them if I were you. Yeah, so that was some tips about what you can see and do while you are here. But what should you not do? Well, let's find out how to behave in Sweden in a little humoristic way. Thank you. 
enjoy watching this movie. And I must say that I, I do not know of many people from abroad that come to Sweden that have not made those mistakes. Yeah, I, I like can't bet. <laughs> like me, my first few weeks, that was exactly me. Yeah. Like, oh, hi, can I sit next to you? And... No, we are quite reserved, I guess, in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So. And we want, it's our time to like relax a little bit, I mm-hmm. guess, also. Mm-hmm. And, uh, listen yeah. to Everybody music likes their personal space. Yeah, of course. So let's move on. We are almost done, but I will just um, tell everyone what we can offer here. Yeah, exactly. Meet so what activities have we planned for them? Yeah. I'm just ready. There we are. There we are. Uh, so you talked a little bit about what Unimit are as an mm-hmm. organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I want to mention again, like what we can offer for, for all of you. And together with Unimeet, uh, you get the opportunity to network as well as have fun mm-hmm. uh, and uh, through educational activities and uh, events. And all our activities are also free to join. Exactly. So that is a big plus, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope that you have like gotten a little taste for quizzes now. <laughs> Because our next activity is actually an online quiz night. Right, and I'm, I'm, I'm bound to somehow comment about the fact that quizzes are huge in Gothenburg. Yeah. For some reason, you go to a pub, there's always a day where you will find a pub quiz. That is true. It is almost as though the entire city is just a whole bunch of nerds. I mean... <laughs> I, I am one, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Me too. So I can't say anything about that. Well, I love to go to the quiz nights. and. Uh, right. And uh, I showed a lot of slides from Gothenburg.com, mm-hmm. the destination website. Right, right. And you can also find a, a page there about quiz, where to go for quizzes. Mm, so, but mm, I, mm. I mean, I hope you will come to our quiz because <laughs> the this is quiz es- especially for you guys. Mm-hmm. And it will be in the beginning of March and uh, the registration will open in February and uh, you will have more information mm-hmm. on our website and social medias and all of that. And the thing is also to make teams so that they can join yes, together and exactly. do it. So find so friends find so you can do it in March. And do it together. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is the website that you go to, unimeetgothenburg.com for information about Unimeet mm-hmm. and also the destination and upcoming, upcoming events. And you can also find uh, past welcome evenings and other clips if you want to watch those because we have like other types of segments and inspiration mm. and in all of those just like how today has been recorded right exactly there are other recorded yeah. content so you can uh, definitely <coughs> check our website out uh, and on our website you can also sign up to our newsletter mm. if you cl- go to the start page and you click subscribe here on it looks exactly like that button <laughs> yeah exactly like exactly, <laughs> exactly. like that and button and you go there. and you sign up and uh, yeah, you will not miss any of our fun activities. And we also have other things in our newsletter. Like we mm. try to make it really inspiring for everyone. Right. Yeah. Remember, this is the city of Gothenburg trying to make sure that you have a nice stay exactly. here. That we want to welcome you and you want to feel, you want, we want you to feel at home here. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So we also have our social medias. We are Unimit Gothenburg on both Instagram and on Facebook. And we update like actually quite frequently I would say yeah and don't forget therefore to smash that button follow like all of that stuff so you can keep track of what we do yes okay that basically brings us to the end yes or is there more for us to show not right now okay yeah do you have anything (laughs) you want to say Yes, I do actually. I would like to say thank you. I would like oh, to say thank you. Oh, you meant that, of course. Yes, yes, yes. I thought that we had maybe some more slides that we wanted to show or something like that, but no, we don't obviously. But I would love to say thank you. Thank you to Unimeet for all the activities that you yes. do, for welcoming me and inviting me to do this. Yes. To all of you that have been watching today, and I hope really for your sake that you actually take this opportunity. Yeah. I, you know, attend all the events that we are organizing for you so that you have the possibility to, once again, make those memories that we want you to make. And we also have networking possibilities, both yeah. with students, researchers, and so, and also companies exactly. as well. So yeah. it's actually a good 
networking place yeah. for. I remember oh, having yeah. hosted a career day last yeah. year. So exactly. yeah, lots of different kinds of activities. Everything can be very useful. And so, thank you, Abilash, for joining us today. Thank you very much Obviously, for having always me. Always amazing. <laughs> With that, we wish you a great evening. Take care. Bye-bye.